فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم ان شاء الله تعالى we're going to start باذن الله الكريم with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this book wasiyatul imam abdul rahman ibn yahya al muallimi and a final advice, a bequest that this noble Imam, this noble scholar, Abdul Rahman ibn Yahya al Mu'allimi, whose name is Abdul Rahman Yahya al Mu'allimi, gave to his student Muhammad ibn Ahmad al Mu'allimi. The teacher, the scholar, is Abdul Rahman ibn Yahya al Mu'allimi, who died the year 1000. 386 Islamic calendar and his student Muhammad ibn Ahmad al-Mu'allimi he died the year 1435 the scholar and the student are both from the land of Yemen they are both from the land of Yemen Abdul Rahman ibn Yahya the teacher I personally do not want to speak about his biography today for many reasons. One of those reasons being, I, de- I think and I believe he deserves a series, not just one sit, but a series of sits regarding his life. Bi'idhnillahi which I hope to bi'idhnillahi start and do inshallah ta'ala. This book, my beloved brothers and sisters, as I said, is a bequest from this noble scholar to his student which is basically a farewell. It's an advice that is directed at his student. And we'll see, inshallah ta'ala, uh, from the book, why he gave him this. But what I want to start with is, what I want to start with and say is, the issue of the importance of wasiyah. So I want you guys to learn this term, what it means. Wasiya means a bequest. A wasiyah is a bequest. Um, the issue of bequest, I'm um, giving a final advice, it is something that was previously done. And this noble scholar, he's only taking the footsteps of the pious predecessors and those who came before him. And it is something that is documented from the Salaf of Hadil Ummah. And it's something Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he himself did. If you look at Surah An-Nisa, Ayah 131, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَلَقَدْ وَصَّيْنَا الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ وَإِيَّاكُمْ أَنِ اتَّقُوا اللَّهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he uh, gives a bequest to the people of the scriptures and he's, which were before us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what does he say to them? He says to them, be conscious of me, know me, be scared of me and have hope in me. Be people who are pious. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah in his book al wasiyah al sughrah which we're going to speak about soon inshallah ta'ala, he says, أما الوصية فما أعلم وصية أنفع من وصية الله ورسوله. He said, I do not know. Ibn Taymiyyah is saying, I do not know a farewell, huh? a bequest that is more beneficial and more greater than that which Allah and His Messenger gave. But it's beneficial for who? Lakin لمن أعقلها واتبعها and the one who ponders and understands it and the one who follows it. And then the Sheikh brings the ayah, وَلَقَدْ وَصَّيْنَا الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ وَإِيَّاكُمْ أَنِ اتَّقُوا اللَّهِ Which is the verse that I just explained recently. And that path, Ibn Taymiyyah says, oh sorry, the, the quote of Ibn Taymiyyah is finished. That path of giving advices to the people you meet, sending a bequest or giving a final, final uh, will to the people you meet, it is something that the prophets and the messengers followed Allah in. They followed him and they did the same. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said in the Quran, وَوَصَّى بِهَا إِبْرَاهِيمُ بَنِيهِ وَيَعْقُوبُ يَا بَنِي إِنَّ اللَّهَ اصْطَفَى لَكُمُ الدِّينَ فَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ Nabi Allah Ibrahim, when he was on his deathbed, he called all his children. And he said to his children, and also Ya'qub, the same. Ya Bunayya, O oh my children, Allah has chosen you for this religion. Do not die except as believers. So my beloved brothers and sisters, 
It is obligatory on each and every one of us to remember this and to be aware of the importance of a will. It should be something that we give to those who are around us. And it is also something that we should take serious from those who give it to us. <coughs> and Allah wa ta'ala says to us, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, those of you who believe, Qu anfusakum wa ahlikum nara. Protect yourselves and your family from the hellfire. The scholars who follow these footsteps is, number one, um, the noble companion Ali ibn Abi Talib. Ali did that same. There's a book, or there is an advice written from him, a wasiyah, which is called Wasiyatu Amir al Mu'minin Ali ibn Abi Talib li Kumail ibn Ziyad. And I have explained it fast and quick previously, and it's on the channel. Muhammad ibn Ahmad uh, al Safarini, rahimahullah, he explained this advice of his. It's, adv- it's explained. It's, there's a sharh and explanation on it. Also, um, an Imam al Awza'i, Abi Amr Abdul Rahman, uh, Ibn Amr al awzai who died the year uh, 157 Hijriya, he also has an advice to who? The Khalifa to Abu al-Abbas, Abi Ja'far al-Mansur, the Abbasi's leader, Abi Ja'far al-Mansur, and it's also published, the advice is written. Also, Wasiyatu al-Imam al-Mu'afi ibn Imran al-Musili, his advice to his children. We also have the wasiyah of Adib al sunnah wal Jama'ah, Abi Muhammad Abdullahi ibn Muslim, who is well known as Ibn Qutaybata al Dainuri, who died in 276 Hijriya. Also, we have the advice of Wasiyyatul uh, Imam Abi Walid uh, Sulaiman ibn Khalif al Baji al Andulusi, which he gave to his two children, Ahmed and Muhammad. We also have the Wasiyya, the bequest of Abi Al Faraj Abdul Rahman ibn Ali who is well known as Ibn al-Jawzi, who died the year 597 Hijriya. His wasiya, his advice is called Leftatul al-Kabid ila nasihat al-Walad. It is published and it's also seen. And also we have the advice and the wasiya of uh, Ibn Taymi, rahimahullah. It's called Wasiya al-Kubra and we also have the wasiya al-Sughra. From those, inshallah ta'ala, that we have is the one written by Al-Imam Al-Dhahabi, Rahimahullah. Al-Imam Al-Dhahabi, Imam Al-Dhahabi, he gave his wasiyah to his <coughs> student, Abi Ma'ali Muhammad ibn Rafi' al-Salami, Rahimahullah ta'ala. Ibn Taymiyyah's wasiyah al-Kubra is to a jama'ah by the name of Abi Al-Barakat, Adi ibn Musafir al-Umawi, that's a Kubra one. The Sura one, he wrote it for who? Li Abi Al-Qasim Al-Qasim ibn Yusuf ibn Muhammad Al-Tijibi. Al-Bustiyu. Mm-hmm. And many also have advised others. So, Abdul Rahman Yahya al Mu'allim, his advice here is only the footsteps of those previous scholars. He's only taking the footsteps of those previously who've done it. And inshallah ta'ala, my aim and objective inshallah ta'ala is to finish all of it here, bi idhnillahi al I'm not going to explain it word for word. What I'm going to do inshallah ta'ala is I'm going to read the paragraph and then I'm going to explain what's in the paragraph inshallah ta'ala. Without any further ado, inshallah ta'ala, we're going to start the book, inshallah ta'ala, and we'll take a lot of benefits from it. The book starts, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen, hamdan kathiran tayyiban mubarakan fih, wa shadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lah, wa shadu anna muhammad al-abduhu wa rasooluh, Allahumma salli ala muhammadin wa ala ali muhammadin, kama sallayta ala ibrahim wa barik ala muhammadin wa ala ali muhammadin, كما باركت على آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد. So the author رحمه الله he started his book with the uh, the صلاة that is known as the صلاة الإبراهيمية. He started his which all of us we read in the صلاة which we're very well aware of and it is its form that the Sheikh used is the one that is on the form of Abi Sa'id in Al-Khudri's version of the uh, صلاة الإبراهيمية. And Abu Bakr Abu Zayd, he has a book called Ajza'ul Hadithiyya. Bakr Abu Zayd, he brings out some benefits regarding it. So one should go there, inshallah ta'ala, and look at the benefits that he mentions regarding the Salatul Ibrahimiyah. 
Then the author goes on to say in رَبَّنَا اغْفِرْ لَنَا وَلِإِخْوَانِنَا الَّذِينَ سَبَقُونَا بِالْإِيمَانِ وَلَا تَجْعَلْ فِي قُلُوبِنَا غِلًّا لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا رَبَّنَا إِنَّكَ رَأُوفٌ رَحِيمٌ رَبَّنَا أَوَّ لُوْدْ اغْفِرْ لَنَا فَغِفَ اسْ وَلِإِخْوَانِنَا أَنْ فَغِفَ أَوَّ بَرَدِزْ الَّذِينَ دَوْزْ هُوْ هَاوْ پَرَسِيدِدْ أَسْ إِنْ إِيمَان and do not place in our hearts towards them any enmity لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا رَبَّنَا أَوَّ لُوْدْ إِنَّكَ رَأُوفٌ رَحِيمٌ You are one who is very merciful and you are gracious. So the author then mentions the verse, this verse, which you will find uh, in the Quran. Um, this verse, Allah wa Taala is telling us or teaching us to become those who make dua for our previous pious predecessors, especially the companions. Because here, the believers who preceded us in Iman, number one, are who? The Sahabas. وَلِذَلِكَ الْإِمَامُ الشَّوْكَانِيُّ In his tafsir of this ayah, he started by saying, أَمَرَهُمُ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى بَعْدَ الْإِسْتِغْفَارِ After asking for forgiveness for yourself, رَبَّنَا اغْفِرْ لَنَا Oh Allah, forgive us. Straight away, what do you say? And also for our brothers. So you're not mean. You're taught not to be mean. Don't be stingy. Don't just make dua for yourself and just hope. No. Make your dua for your brothers. And number one, the companions. He goes, فَيَدْخُلُ فِي ذَلِكَ الصَّحَابَةُ دُخُولًا أَوَّلِيًا The Sahabas are the first ones who enter this. Why are they the first ones who enter this? لِأَنَّهُمْ أَشْرَفُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Because they're the most honorable people, believers. And they're the greatest of them. This is what the verse uh, teaches us. وَلِذَلِكَ This is a sickness, he says. الْإِمَامُ الشَّوْكَانِ He says, وَهَذَا دَاءُ الْعُضَالِ إِنَّمَا يُصَابُ بِهِ مَنِ بِتُولِيَ بِمُعَلِّمٍ مِنَ الرَّافِضَةِ This is a sickness that has entered the hearts of the, the Rafidah who have now come out to insult their companions. Instead of asking forgiveness for them and making dua and supplicating for them, they make dua against them, going against the Book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The author went on to say, أَمَّا بَعْدُ فَقَدْ صَحِبَنِ الْوَلَدُ الْفَاضِلُ محمد ابن أحمد ابن محمد ابن أحمد المعلمي وفقه الله تعالى عامين كاملين بمكة المكرمة وحمدت صحبته وأدبه وحرصه على طلب العلم وقرأ علي كتبا في العربية الأجرومية فالمتممة فالقطرة وطرفا من الألفية ابن مالك مع عراب عدة أجزاء من القرآن وأكثر زبد بن رسلان والرحبية مشروحة والسامعني كثيرا أشرح ما يجب في الاعتقاد والعمل وأخذ بنصيب من معرفة ذلك مع صلاحه في نفسه وإقباله على الخير وعدم ميله إلى اللهو واللعب He goes أما بعد to proceed I have been accompanied and I was in the company of this virtuous child which is a student virtuous whose name is Muhammad ibn Ahmed ibn Muhammad ibn Ahmed al-Mu'allimi. And then he makes dua for him. وَفَّقَهُ Allah. May Allah aid him and give him the support. And he, now he mentions how long he spent with him. He said he spent with me for two years. Two long, complete years he was with me. And he stayed with me in Mecca. And I praised him in his companionship for him to be with me. And I also praised him for his etiquette and his manners and the way, the way he carried himself. And how he strove to gain knowledge. His effort and hard working he put in. And whilst he was with me, he read unto, he read unto me, in the Arabic language, the book al ajrumiyah And the book al ajrumiyah is written by the author, Muhammad ibn Muhammad ibn Dawood al sinhaji who is known as Ibn Ajurrum. So what he's known as. So this book is attributed to him. He read that book on me. He also read on me, Fal Mutammima. Mutammima here is Mutammima al Ajrumiya. It is a book written by Muhammad ibn Muhammad ibn Muhammad al Ru'ainiyu, who is well known as Ibn al Hattab, who died in 954 Hijriya. It has many explanations. One of the most common explanations is Al Kawakib al Durriya, written by Al Ahdal. Written by Al-Ahdal. There's also Al-Fakihi. He has a sharh on it. It's called Al-Fawakih Al-Janiyya. There's many shuruh on it. Al-Wasabihi has a sharh on it. It's called Al-Durrat al He also read on me, he said, Fal-Qatru. He read another grammar book on me, which is Al-Qatru. And this is known as what? 
قتل الندى وبل الصدى بايهو عبد الله بن يوسف ابن هشام الانصاري المصري who died the year uh, 761 هجرية he read on me this book as well and then he goes on to say وطرف من الفية بن مالك and he read a portion of الفية بن مالك on me as well الفية بن مالك is written by محمد بن عبد الله الطائي who is well known as ابن مالك who died the year 600 and 672 هجرية he read it on me he said and this book الفية بن مالك is from the greatest books of grammar it's a thousand and odd lines it's a thousand lines so he said he read a portion of it on me and once a person has studied up to that level of grammar, their knowledge is epic. It is, it is serious. They're very strong, especially in the Arabic language. And a student of knowledge, brothers, that's the, seer, that's the form he has to follow. al ajrumiya And the second after that, Mutamimatul al ajrumiya And then after that, read Qatlun Nadda wa Ballu Sada by Ibn Hisham himself. He has a sharah on it as well. There's an explanation. The author himself explained the book. And then straight away, the person goes to four. Al-Fiyyat ibn Malik. And the best sharah for Al-Fiyyat is the sharah of Ibn Aqil. If you also take it with the hashiyah and the commentary and the foot points of Al-Khudari, you're sorted, you're good to go. You're very good, you're very good to go. Uh, um, also he said, وَأَكْثَرَ زُبَدُ بْنُ رَسْلَانِ And he also read on me the book Zubad, which is a manzumatu fi fiqh ala madhabi shafi'iyya. This book, Zubad, he also read on me, is a book in fiqh. Islamic legal jurisprudence, but in the madhab of the school of the Shafi'iyya. He also read it on me. And it's written by uh, the great faqih, the Shafi'i scholar, whose name is Abu Abbas Ahmad ibn al Hussein ibn al Hassan ibn Raslan. He read that on me. He also said, Pay attention, just two years, all of this. Somebody would stay with you for five, ten years and he doesn't read a book on you. He just comes in, Salam alaikum, and he. These two years of his look, how many works he's read. These are books. Books that the scholars who've written it, written it for years. You can imagine who, how much he's read on it. He read on his shaykh and how much he benefited from him. مشروحتن, and he said he also read on me in the Rahbiya. The Rahbiya is written by the author of Muhammad ibn Ali ibn Muhammad al-Rahbi, who died in year 577. Rahimahullah ta'ala. And it is from the mothers. It's the books that a student of knowledge cannot stay without if he wants to know inheritance. Do you want to know Islamic inheritance? If a person dies, how much they need to inherit and what not? This book is an eye-opener for you. And of course, it's written in the, according to the Shafi'i Madhab. Because the author is a Shafi'i. وَسَمِعَنِي The author goes on to say, and he also made me listen to him and go over with him كَثِيرًا أَشْرَحُ مَا يَجِبُ فِي الْإِعْتِقَادِ وَالْعَمَلِ Books of Aqidah. A lot of books of Aqaid, I also went through with him. And I'tiqad, my beloved brothers and sisters, is... Something that resides in your heart. The word i'tiqad is mahalluhu al-qalb. It residates, it residence in the heart. But it also doesn't just stay in the heart. It also comes out on the limbs. And this is the concept of Ahl sunnah wal jamaah which is what? Al-Imanu qawlun wa amal. Iman is speech and it's also, it's also action. And this is a consensus amongst Ahl sunnah. There's no dispute that the Iman is speech, that it's belief and it's also actions. There's no disputes amongst Ahl sunnah. Wa naqilu al the person who transmitted this consent is none other than Imam al-Shafi'i where he said وَكَانَ الْإِجْمَعُ مِنَ الصَّحَابَةِ وَالتَّابِعِينَ وَمَنْ بَعْدَهُمْ وَمَنْ أَدَرَكْنَا يَقُولُونَ الْإِيمَانُ قَوْلٌ وَعَمَلٌ وَنِيَّةٌ وَلَا يُجْزِئُ وَاحِدٌ مِنَ الثَّلَاثِ إِلَّا بِالْآخَرِ This statement you can find in the book أُصُولُ اعْتِقَادِهَا لِسُنَّةِ وَالْجَمَعَةِ by Imam Abu Qasim Hibatullahi Allah Lakaiyu where he says that there's a consensus from the Sahabas and the Tabi'een and those who came after them and those who which, which we reached, uh, Shafi'i saying this, that the Iman is speech and it's actions and it's intentions and that one cannot suffice you from the other. So you have to have the speech, you have to have the actions, you have to come with the intention and one will not suffice you from the other. The same, Imam al-Bukhari also transmitted a consensus. Abu Ubaid Qasim ibn Salam, Imam al-Ajurri ibn Abdul al-Barr, uh, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, you find it extensive, extensive places in the Kitab and the Sunnah, you will find it. Um, that the Iman is called Al-Aman. So the Shaykh said he read those kind of books on me. He came and he read Aqidah books on me. Just as much as he learned the Arabic language, Aqidah. You see, he said, وَأَخَذَ بِنَصِيبٍ مِّن مَعْرِفَةِ ذَلِكَ And he said he took a very good portion of that. So he had a good understanding of it. مَعَ الصَّلَاحِهِ فِي نَفْسِهِ وَإِقْبَالِهِ عَلَى الْخَيْرِ But pay attention. Just having the narrations on the top of your tongue 
and just knowing it like that, and having a lot of understanding, is not enough. He also is praising him for another thing, which is he was pious in himself. He was a righteous person. He as an individual was a noble, righteous person. The way he carried himself, the way he was, the way he conducted the people. He wasn't a person who deviated and was inclined, uh, had any form of inclination towards playing and joking and laughing. He wasn't like that. Allahu Akbar. This is a tizkiyah, by the way. It's a praise from a sheikh to his student. And if you're a student, my beloved brothers and sisters, these are the kind of characteristics that you need. You need to be one who wants to know, learn. You're hungry. You're hungry. Well, I'll give you an example. If a person is today depressed because they've got a marital problem, sah? or they've, got a, they've lost a loved one, a child that you love, you've lost, can you think about food? Can you think about your friends? Can you think about anything else other than the problem that you have in hand? Can you? No. So the same is for a person who loves knowledge. He's like that. The feeling he has towards knowledge is that he can't sleep. He can't eat. He can't relax. He can't laugh. He can't joke. For him, this is it. That's all he wants. He enjoys it. He, if he sleeps, it just Masai, just things keep coming to his head. So he just gets up again, and he always sees himself reading again. Four or five hours go back, and he's like, "Oh, I need sleep. I really need sleep." He has to convince himself to sleep. He has to convince himself to eat until he reaches a point. The passion that he has for knowledge, that he reaches a particular point where he starts to dislike sleeping. He starts to dislike eating. He starts to dislike everything other than seeking knowledge. And the day you become like that is the day you start to become a person who's really going to learn. You turn away from everything else. You turn away from everything else. And the amount of your integration and your dealings with people and your laughing and your joking is def definitely the amount that you're decreasing in terms of your, your passion for knowledge. It has an effect on your passion of knowledge. And Shaykh is also saying that he's excessive love towards me. He loves me a lot. And he's striving to give me comfort. You see? He said he would, he would uh, burden himself in serving me and helping me and aiding me. Even to the extent when he's sick and he's ill. And this is a characteristic of a student of knowledge. Towards his sheikh and the person, he's, you know, his sheikh, is the student serves the teacher. He serves his teacher. وَلِذَلِكْ الْعَلَّامَ أَبُوا الْحَسَنْ إِبْنُ بَطَّالْ الْعَلَّامَ أَبُوا الْحَسَنْ إِبْنُ بَطَّالْ He has a sharah on Sahih al-Bukhari. Is a sharah on Bukhari, the hadith. The hadith of Anas ibn Malik, pay attention, are you with me? It's hadith. Where Anas ibn Malik says, كَانَ النَّبِيُّ إِذَا خَرَجَ لِحَاجَتِهِ The Anas ibn Malik said, if the Prophet ever went out for something he needed, call of nature, he wanted to do something, or he wanted, you know, a special call of nature, he said, I would take with me, أَنَا وَغُلَامٌ مَعَنَا إِدَاوَةٌ مِنْ مَعْنَا We would take a, a pot, whatever, to, with water in it for the Prophet, like to serve him. Ibn Battal, when he brings this about Anas ibn Malik and how he served the Prophet, look what he said. Because this is going to teach us what? What is it upon the student to be? What should you actually be? He said, In this is the statement of Anas and the action of Anas. In it is, The service of a scholar and how you should serve a scholar. And you should carry for him his water and the things that he needs. And other than that, is an honor for you as a student. Sharaful lil mutaalim wa mustahabullah. It's an honor for you and it's also recommended for you. This is something one should do. For a scholar, like not for like us students. Scholar, we're talking about. We're talking about scholar. We're talking about a scholar, a person of ilm and rusukh, who has understanding. Abdul Hayy al Muallimi, who is the one who is the teacher, deserves this and many more, no doubt. Limada, لِأَنَّهُ He was referred to, as Bakr Abu Zayd would say a lot about, about him, Al Albani used to say about him as well, he used to refer to him as Dahabi al Asr. He was the Imam al Dahabi of this time, the way his knowledge was. Abdul Hayyah al Mu'alimi, that was the nickname that was given to him. He was an Alim, Rasikh, Al Imam. Also, it shows you that 
the teacher is not ignorant about the deans of his students when he deals with him. The teacher notes that down and remembers that. And remember, you as a person get from your shaykh, the more he sees from you kindness and generosity towards him. Are you with me? The scholars, they say, Nafi ibn Azraq, the things that prevented him from knowledge was the fact that he used to argue with Ibn Abbas. Always argumentative. Always just debating with him. If he just humbled himself, Nafi uh, al-Azraq, and just sat down, with him, he would have benefited from him. Took knowledge from him. He would have understood so much from him. And it would have been a strong narration to the tafsir of Ibn Abbas. But because his deviation, his ignorance, and his filth that he had in him, because he was a khariji, he would always argue with Ibn Abbas and never learn from him. And Ibn Abbas won't open up to him. He won't give him knowledge. Because when you do come, you come with the mindset of arguing and debating. So know, know that you're the one who loses out. You're the one who loses out from your shaykh. Allah, the shaykh goes on to say, Abdul Hayy al Mu'allimi, Allah, an yajziyahu khayran wa birran wa tawfiqan wa salahan wa an yusliha shu'unahu fi deenihi wa dunya. He says, I ask Allah that he rewards him with good. And that Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala gives him the uh, obedience. And Allah aids him in the good. And Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala makes him a pious individual. And I also ask Allah, he said, وَيُصْلِحَ شُؤُونَهُ فِي دِينِهِ وَدُنْيَاهِ And that Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, he perfects his worldly affairs and his hereafter affairs. Allah makes it good for him. I ask Allah to do so. This here, this is a dua, a supplication from a teacher to his student. And this is one thing that one needs to know. When you have people who are learning from you, or you're teaching, consistently having on your tongue, may Allah preserve you, give you the best things, to teach yourself this. ولذلك العلامة شيخ مقبل بن هادي الوادع رحمه الله in his noble book الجامع الصحيح مما ليس في الصحيحين he mentions in his book a chapter and he goes باب chapter الدعاء supplication للطالب supplication to the student والثناء عليه بما يستحقه and praising him in that which he deserves العلامة الشيخ مقبل بن هادي الوادع رحمه الله رحمة واسعة he states in his book here a chapter, the chapter of a student, a, a, a chapter making dua for the student and praising him in that which he deserves. And then straight away, he brought the story, Shaykh Mughbil brought it, the hadith of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, which is in Sahih Musnad Imam Ahmed. Imam Shaykh Mughbil, when he brought in his kitab, he brought a hadith straight after it, which is the hadith of Abdullah. Uh, Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu and that hadith is uh, in Musnad Ahmad ibn Hanbal rahimahullahu ta'ala so when he's bringing this Shaykh Muqbil he sees this hadith to be what? he sees it to be a hadith which is sahih which is not in Sahih al-Bukhari and Muslim this is, the, this, is the, this is the purpose of this book for him so in other words Shaykh Muqbil considered this hadith to be sahih عنده. and not only him Ahmad Shakir agreed with him and Shu'ib al-Arna'ut also agreed with him